Voters have said the economy and inflation is top of the list for them. What do you intend to do to address that? I just spoke with Lawrence outside of Leo's in Warren just a few moments ago, and he said 100% increased pay and lowering costs are what his top concerns are. And what I've already done is vote for HR1, which would secure our energy, and having secure energy will lower everything from gas to groceries. We voted on that last year. It's currently sitting on Chuck Schumer's desk. Also something going on right across the street in Sterling Heights and right down the street in Warren. I'm pushing back on harmful EV mandates that are going to force EVs on us and force our jobs to other states and other countries. You don't have to look any farther than Warren. 2,400 layoffs happening this month in overflow production from Sterling Heights right across the street, not going to Warren, but going to Saltillo, Mexico. And that is happening because of the fees that are being leveled against automotive companies uh, to the tune of a half billion dollars so far for penalties and non-compliance from the end of the 2017, 18, 19 years. And then NHTSA uh, is threatening $14 billion in fees and penalties on an industry uh, for non-compliance in the next few years. That's coming directly out of union bonuses. That's coming directly out of pay. And right now, Lawrence is driving an Uber because he's struggling to make ends meet. Those are things that I'm doing right now to lower the cost of living for all Americans and to fight for auto workers and the automotive industry in the 10th Congressional District. In terms of, in terms of inflation, how quickly can we see relief? Well, the best thing the government can do is stop wasting the taxpayer's money. Um, by making sure that we have accountability and transparency throughout the process. And, uh, and we absolutely have to make sure that we are doing things like reinvesting in our communities. Reinvesting in our communities like the $118 million that I've brought back to uh, the 10th Congressional District. Everything from infrastructure or making sure that we're keeping our Lake St. Clair clean to request to make sure that we fix Mound Road uh, south of 696 to, uh, to 8 Mile. That investment is going to help to grow our economy, which will help us to be stronger and put more money in our pockets and help make our nation stronger as well. Okay. There's wars uh, that are... Uh, we don't have an end in sight right now. Um, there's no ceasefire with a war in the Middle East nor is there in Ukraine. Where do you stand on both of those issues? Well, um, quite clearly, after the terrible collapse in Afghanistan under the harris biden administration, it emboldened our, our adversaries in China, in Russia, and in Iran. And as a result, you see um, China pushing out, threatening in the South China Sea, and spying as close as, as um, Camp Grayling, that we just saw uh, five uh, Michigan students that were put into custody this past week to Russia going into Eastern Europe, invading Ukraine, mm -hmm. and Iran using oil money that, uh, that they have gotten because this administration refuses to enforce sanctions, that they are using that oil money to fund the Houthis, Hamas, and Hezbollah, and using it to fund their nuclear ambitions. Right now is open season on Americans under the Harris-Biden administration, and we need to make sure that we are holding these bad actors accountable. I'm going to make sure that in my role on House Foreign Affairs, we continue to do that. Does that mean that you continue to support Israel and Ukraine? Continue to support Israel and Ukraine. In terms of women's rights, many are going to be basing their decision on that issue. Where do you stand? Uh, it's quite clear. Um, first of all, I'm not a woman. And my heart aches for any woman who's faced with that decision. I always lead with empathy. I will never judge. I will always love. And the fact of the matter is that in the state of Michigan, it's a state issue. This is not a federal issue. This has been pushed back to the state, and the people of Michigan have spoken clearly. They've spoken clearly, and I am duty-bound as the elected representative to support the will of the state. That covers rape, abortion, um, and incest, and also life of the mother. And I believe that IVF is also and should be strongly supported. Okay. Immigration is another uh, key issue. Um, what approach would you take when it comes to immigration? Um, well, first, we should just enforce the laws that we have on the books in this administration under Kamala Harris that failed border czar has failed to enforce uh, the border. Um, this administration, under her watch, actually repealed the things that worked under the Trump administration. And as a result, we have 10 million illegals that have crossed um, uh, over the southern border. You have uh, 100,000, according to, uh, to ICE, 100,000 of those are convicted criminals. 
14,000 of those are rapists and 13,000 of those are murderers. You have 100,000 people um, per year dying because of fentanyl poisoning and it's happening in our communities right now. What the Customs and Border Patrol agent, when I went to go visit Eagle Pass myself, what he said it would fix 70 to 80 percent of the problem is the Remain in Mexico policy. Simply staying with the Trump era Remain in Mexico policy would do the most good immediately and Kamala Harris has the ability to change that policy right now, to go back to what works, to secure our border and no one is talking about our northern border. Michigan is a northern border state. Of the apprehensions on the, of the uh, members on the FBI watch list, 86 percent of those are coming across on the northern border. And in fact, apprehensions on the northern border have gone up 500 percent in the, in the recent past. Here in our state, mm -hmm. we've seen mass shootings in Oxford, Michigan State University, and in Rochester Hills. What do you believe needs to be done to address these mass shootings? Um, I have three little boys, and I make a point to tell them I love them every single day and kiss them before they leave for school that I'm in town because I'm terrified of the unthinkable. Um, as a father first, um, it is my job to make sure that I not only protect my children, but all of yours as well which is why one of my very first bills is a bipartisan school safety bill that does everything from making sure that we have tax credits for parents to lock up their weapons because 80 percent of these crimes that are prosecuted are they're prosecuted with guns that are legally owned parents need to lock up their weapons to demanding that the president of the united states have in his national security strategy a way to address mass shootings and three addressing how kids are being addressed on social media is not just the shootings which are terrible in themselves but violence in schools are are is, is erupting is is hurting kids is hurting teachers and those are three things and my bipartisan school legislation that I'm moving forward. I'm also working with Sandy Hook Promise on the Kids Proof Act. Uh, it's bipartisan and it has a number of bipartisan sponsors and that's something that I'm very excited to do. But in addition, uh, gun violence is not just a suburban issue. It's an American issue and it's hitting urban areas very, very hard. The defund the police movement and other um, areas that have turned into the disrespect the police movement have led to lawless areas in our own cities, in our own towns. And then you have activist prosecutors. You mentioned Michigan State. There are people who have access to these guns who should not be having access to these guns. They should be behind bars. These activist prosecutors and judges are putting dangerous criminals back on the street because of some woke agenda and they're not allowing us to be able to keep our families safe and so making sure that our law enforcement officers at the prosecutor and at the judge and at the attorney level are actually doing their job and keeping dangerous criminals off the street that would do the most to tamp down gun violence and then the third the suicide rate addressing uh, mental health and, and, uh, and addiction because the largest cause of gun death in this country is suicide and no one talks about that I'm solidly focused on supporting organizations like FAN and doing things like having uh, my Road to Recovery Act that is allowing technical support and funding for peer-to-peer -peer organizations that help everyone from um, uh, veterans to people who are struggling with mental health to getting resources in the schools for kids who need it. So addressing the school shootings, addressing the uh, urban shootings, and addressing suicides are all ways that you go at addressing gun violence, and I'm doing that already in my first term. Former President Trump has for years said that uh, he won the election. Um, where do you fall when it comes to election integrity and will you accept the results of this election even if they don't go your way? I will accept the results of the election, um, but people don't talk about um, how Al Gore complained about the election. In fact, it was spooked on SNL. People don't talk about how Hillary Clinton complained about the election and that was also spooked. Um, Everybody uh, in, this, in this country, I believe, owes a duty to run hard and then when the votes are, are counted and they're counted fairly to support the will of the people and I will do that. But what we're doing to make sure that people can trust elections is I voted twice for the SAVE Act and the SAVE Act is just reaffirming that only American citizens can vote. But sadly, my Democrat colleagues 
couldn't support that very simple constitutional notion that only American citizens can vote. I also support the ACE Act from my colleague uh, Brian Stile that would do things like make sure that um, uh, the constituencies and uh, in, in areas uh, had voter ID, very popular across the board. Uh, these are things that we need so that people can trust the elections uh, and so that we can move forward as a country and not as members of a political party. So yes, I will support the, uh, the results of a free and fair election and I'm looking forward uh, to November 5th. Um, I just want to give you an opportunity to talk about you know, a couple of the differences you'd like to highlight between you and your opponent. Uh, you, you've served in the military, yeah. you have a family, uh, he's a former prosecutor. Uh, anything like that and anything you may want to share more about yourself? Very quickly, I come from an area and I represent a district where three things matter. Experience matters, results matter, and values matter. Experience matters because I'm a combat veteran and I understand what it takes to keep this country safe because I've helped to do it before and now I'm on House Foreign Affairs with an open border and our world being on fire. I'm in a position to keep our sons out of war and to keep this nation safe. I also have experience as an automotive manufacturer running against somebody who called automotive a dying industry. I understand what it takes to make sure that we make our nation, our state, and our district stronger by making sure that we can make battery electric vehicles, we can make hybrids, we can make hydrogen, we can make any kind of vehicles. And then we can go and do things for defense. We can do, do things for maritime. We can build and do anything here. This is the arsenal of democracy. And we need to continue that by having somebody on energy and commerce, an A committee, a very important committee that has jurisdiction and watch over the things that are most important in our district. Also, results matter. I brought $118 million in investment back into our district, $2.9 million to individual constituents in the district who are struggling with getting their benefits, to businesses who are struggling to get their refund back from the IRS. We've serviced thousands and thousands of cases for people who are desperate, including a veteran who messaged us on Facebook, got a response back in 10 minutes, and a mother who got her three-year-old back from Iraq and had no other way to go. Also, values matter. I'm right down the middle. From business to combat to Congress. I've always put people first, not politics, and you can see it in my voting record. That's exactly where the district is, and I believe that people in this district are going to reward experience, they're going to reward results, and they're